Hi everybody, Martin here, and welcome to I'm Probably Playing It Wrong, another edition. And today on the channel, I'm doing a uh, preview slash demo of Ruins Death Binder. This is a uh, one to two player uh, game of tempting fate, making decisions, and fighting against the odds. And a reminder, this is a prototype. Everything you see here today is in prototype form and could change. Cool, so um, let's, take a, let's take you on a brief tour on what are the components of the game, which is here already almost set up. So first of all, I wanna show you on your character board. So this character board tells you all about your character. Um, it gives you all of your stats, all of your uh, overall stats and your specific stats. It looked kind of overwhelming, don't worry about it. Um, we, hopefully this will all become clearer as we uh, progress through this uh, kind of like demo and playthrough. Um, that's your current level, uh, your attacks, your magical and your physical attacks, how many attacks you get per turn, uh, your defense value, your health, and how many cards you can store after every combat round. And I'll talk more about storing cards in a, in a minute. So those are kind of like overall, um, you know, things about your character. And then here are more specific trackers. Here's your defense track. Here's your health track. So if you take damage, it will hit your defense first. And then when your defense goes down to zero, then you start losing health. Here is how many experience points your character currently has. Every time you reach uh, these kind of hand icon kind of milestones there, uh, then uh, you will get a benefit uh, based on the amount of experience, right? Um, and this is a kind of unique thing about your character. Uh, this one is called the Taint Track. And um, I think I, the way I understand Taint thematically is um, the more that you uh, fight these evil creatures, these foul creatures, and the more that you encounter and have to make kind of like a tough moral decisions here, the more uh, kind of darkness your soul acquires and the more, uh, so that is tracked by your taint track. And as you can see here, the more uh, your taint track increases, the more enemies you have to fight per encounter. So here's one per encounter, two per encounter, three per encounter, uh, culminating in four per encounter. And then the flip side of this guy is actually a harder um, version of this where you can actually go up to five enemies per encounter. Boy, um, I don't want to, I don't want to go have to go up against that. Um, but that's basically what all the trackers are here. Um, there's also areas for your draw deck, cards that you store after each encounter, any skill cards you acquire can be placed here, and then cards that you remove from your deck are placed here. Again, don't worry if you don't understand a lot of this stuff now. I will get to that a little later on. But that is your player board. And uh, you, this is a map of the, your particular path that you are taking uh, from the uh, higher levels of this dungeon and descending into the lower levels of this dungeon. By the way, before I forget, there are actually two game modes here. There's a descent mode, and then there's actually a story mode. There's a scenario-driven kind of story mode, which I'm not gonna be showing you today, but I will wanna mention it, that uh, that's another option. So there's a couple of different ways to play this game, as well as you have the option to play it solo as well as two-player. But back to the map. Now, you'll notice, on each kind of uh, section of the map or node of the map, there are little tokens. And those tokens, I'll show you a closer look here, they tell you what you have to do uh, to be able to resolve that area of that map and then move forward to another area. So here's an example. Um, if this token were placed down there, uh, when you get to that, if you chose to resolve it, you'd have to resolve an event. That's what that EV stands for, another event an encounter, which is you have to fight some enemies, and then a third event. And if you can resolve all of those things, if those three events in that one encounter in that order, then uh, that means that you have uh, passed this portion of the map. And then at the flip side of this, there's an optional side quest that you could take a look at and um, you could add it to your character card uh, character board if you wanted to. So here's a side quest, defeat one foe in your first turn. If you're able to do that, you get a reward of two experience points. And if you say, okay, yes, I do want to take a, tackle this side quest, then you could place that in the side quest portion of your player board. So that's kind of an example of what. So every, so the nice thing about this game is that there is a, you, you get to choose a random, uh, kind of, not a random, but um, a variable way to dis that, that you can, a path that you can take uh, descending down toward the boss, right? So it's basically a different game every time, a different path through the dungeon every time you play it. So that's kind of a nice thing there. Uh, I mentioned the boss, so let's talk about enemies. 
enemies and bosses are in this area over here. So your enemies are uh, in this deck and they are arranged in uh, increasing order of difficulty. You start out with level one enemies and then you move on to level two enemies and then eventually you get to the more difficult level three enemies. So in within each tier, you would shuffle that tier and then place the level three, the shuffled level three is on the bottom, the level two is in the middle, the level one's on the top. So that's how you arrange. And then eventually you get to fight some bosses. So uh, these are also arranged in uh, increasing order of difficulty. So bosses like Var must devour of flesh. He's a level one boss. Kalman, Lord of flesh, level one. Uh, Eshadon, the Accursed One, he's a level 2 boss, and Bertun, Preacher of the Corruption, a level 3 boss. So all of those, you know, kind of bosses here. And I'll talk more about, like, specifically uh, what all the icons are in the different bosses. So, um, as well, you have some event cards here, skill cards that you could potentially acquire, special action cards with more powerful actions, and blinded cards that don't really do anything useful for you, but some resolutions of some events or encounters are going to tell you to add a blinded card to your uh, action deck over here. And uh, when you add the uh, blinded card, these basically are garbage cards that clutter up your deck and give you less options of useful actions on a turn. So that's what those are. All right, so let's go ahead and demo a couple of uh, rounds of play of this game so that you guys can get an idea of uh, how, to, how the game is played. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the map here. And we are going to choose, uh, we could do one, either of these three that are on the highest row here. So this one says, resolve an event, have an encounter, and then rest. This one says, an event. And this one says, encounter, event, and rest. So these two over here are kind of similar. Uh, what's nice about them, I mean, what's not really great about them is that you're going to fight enemies, this encounter here, but you get a chance to rest uh, at the end of it. And resting is good because when you rest, you can take some of these rest actions here. You could heal wounds. You could increase your immunity. You could buy action cards, you could remove cards, and most importantly as a rest action, you can start to spend experience points and um, upgrade your character. So that's why you would want to rest. That's a thing here. But right now, just to start things off nice and slow, uh, this middle token here says that I have to resolve an event. Um, so what does that mean? So I'm going to do this one right now. I'm over here and I'm resolving this event over here. So let's take a look at our... Um, turn order schematics here. If it's an event, we would draw an event card. Uh, and then these are the types of events that you could see. You could get a decision, a discovery, or you could have an ambush, or you could have to resolve an obstacle, right? And then it gives you a little bit of a summarized, uh, like how you would resolve each one of those things. So let's draw an event card and let's see uh, what we would have to do here. So I've shuffled the event deck here. Well, let's go ahead and give it a nice little, last little cursory shuffle here. And um, let's draw the top card of the event deck and see what's going on. All right, what do we got? We have an obstacle. So this is a chest. And to defeat this obstacle in one turn, if we are able to defeat this obstacle in one turn, to add two draw deck cards into the stored action cards. And then if failed, remove one health to resolve this card. And this, this uh, obstacle has seven hit points, right? So that's what that uh, middle number means. And this is its vulnerability to physical attacks and its vulnerability to magical attacks. Okay, so uh, for all intents and purposes, you would treat an obstacle like an enemy uh, that can't, uh, can't fight you back. Uh, so that's, and we have to resolve it. There's no, since we chose that path, we have to resolve that. There's no way to skip it. Cool. So uh, we are doing this uh, obstacle right now. So time to talk about the draw deck here. So uh, basically this game is what's called a reverse deck builder. And in this reverse deck builder, you start out with all the cards, right? In a normal deck builder, you start out with just a hand of basic cards uh, with very low level stuff. And then you um, add on to them as you purchase, upgrade, and do more stuff. And then you become more and more powerful. Well, here you start out with all the cards. And that sounds like a good thing, but it's actually not. Um, because this is kind of a bummer because um, you have uh, cards here that aren't necessarily very great for you. and But they're all there. They're all going to come out um, as uh, the start of the game. Now, as you go on, as you resolve each encounter uh, or event, you will have the opportunity to store some cards and remove some cards 
I'm going to move out of here, store some cards over here and remove some cards over here. And uh, those decisions are important because that is the way that you kind of hone your deck and make it uh, a better choice for you, right? So, okay, anyway, enough talking, Martin. We are going to set out six action cards from our draw deck. So we're doing that right now. So red is a uh, physical attack, another physical attack here, yet another physical attack. This one is blue background, that's a magical attack, magical attack, and magical attack. Cool. Now, um, the way that this works is you, uh, so everything, an enemy or an obstacle, has a vulnerability. So this has a vulnerability of one to physical attacks and one to magical attacks. Now remember, according to this, I have to do seven points of damage in just one uh, turn. If I'm not able to, I basically fail to defeat the obstacle and I have to lose one health to be able to pass this card, which sucks. So somehow I have to do uh, seven points of damage to this obstacle. So let's look at our available action cards that we've drawn and let's see how we could do seven points of damage. So um, this, uh, because it's a, uh, you, you would be looking, you'd be looking basically at the level one tier here, right? And uh, this will do one point of damage times one, which is the, the chest's vulnerability to physical attacks. And that would be a one point of damage if I chose this card. Now I can only choose three cards um, from this deck at my current level. Um, later on, once I have an opportunity to upgrade that, then I could choose more cards. So right now, if I chose, let's say, these three um, physical attacks here, this would do one damage, one damage, one damage, that's three. Uh, and three is my limit, so I wouldn't be able to pass that. Now, it's also important to look at the um, kind of extra bonus actions that each card has. So for example, this one has finishing move. When this card defeats an enemy, gain uh, health and experience not above your maximum. So that would be good for me, but um, not great for you know defeating that chest. This card has no special ability over here. And this card has focus. If you attack your target with another focus card earlier this round, deal one additional damage which would be great if I had another focus card in my hand, but I do not. Um, uh, but okay, we have a magic, we have a, uh, we have a magical attack here. Uh, when it says increase focus, spend three defense to increase the damage of any focus cards played this round by one. So uh, if I, if I play this first and then this, then I could potentially make this card do two damage rather than one. Because, I, because of this increased focus uh, ability here. So that's kind of cool. So then I could potentially have four damage rather than three. Let's see what else there is here. Could I potentially make seven damage uh, with the cards that I have in my hand? Here are my remaining two spell cards. Uh, Whirlwind damage is dealt to all opponents. Uh, I'm only uh, fighting one chest, so that doesn't help me. And in Endure, if the top removed action card is a uh, spell, gain one health, not above max. So um, looks like no matter what I do, no matter what combination of card, my, my available action cards here, I'm not going to be able to do uh, seven damage to at least to defeat in, in one turn. Um, so looks like I will fail to open this chest and therefore will have to uh, suffer this, remove one health to resolve this card. Darn you. But I have to uh, play those cards anyway. So, um, so I'm going to put this chest up here. I've already resolved it. It's just a matter of exactly how I'm resolving it. Um, and then uh, I'm going to get rid of... I'm going to play this card and this card and uh, this card. Okay, so no. Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to play... Well, just to make it easy, I'll play these three physical damage cards. Okay? Um, so the way this works, at the end of every um, kind of event or combat, um, you would decide which used action cards to store and then remove the other used cards. Now, currently, at my current level, I can only store one card at the end of each kind of combat round. So I have to choose which one I think will be more useful to me going forward. So I am going to choose to keep or store this focus card here, this focus physical attack, 
placing that here for stored action cards. And I'm going to therefore add these two uh, to my removed action cards over here on the left side of my character board. And that means that I was able to uh, resolve this chest, uh, but I have to take one health. I have to remove one health. So my health goes down to five. And I resolve that event. Now, after resolving the event, let's see, what does it say here? Uh, in the third order schematics. Uh, after resolving the event, Adventure Resolve put event card into resolved events pile. So I've put it here into resolved events. And then have all adventures been resolved in the adventure token? Yes. Add one taint for each event, encounter, and rest evolved. Okay, so I have to add one taint for each event uh, evolved. So I have to increase my taint level by one. Okay. And then it says, um, turn the token on the backside and decide to go on a side quest. If yes, add it to your side quest area in your character card, and if not, put aside. So now I'll take a look at this guy. And I'll say, well, do I want to... There's a side quest here. It says, gain two experience points in an encounter. And if I'm able to do that, then the reward is to heal one point of damage. So if option, I have the option of uh, taking this on as a side quest or, uh, by, or discarding it. So I think I will actually take this on as a side quest and place it in my side quests area in my character card. And so now... I've uh, finished, I've basically resolved one turn in the game, and so now I have the option of going sideways or I have the option of going forward. So my path options here on the map are I could go here, I could go here, or I could go here. Well, let's take a look at this guy over here. This one would be resolve an event, event, and then rest, and then an encounter after that event. Um, you know what? I think I'm gonna do it. So I'm now resolving this guy. And first of all, I have to resolve an event. So let's see what event is available to us. So this one is a decision. And it says, you spot a broken column about to tip over and a band of guards running away from something monstrous. What do you do? You can uh, push the column or you could hold the column. I have a choice here. Do I push the column for plus four experience points, but also plus one taint level, or do I hold the column and uh, maybe save the guards running away, but at the cost of I have to remove two draw deck cards from my draw deck? Um, I'm going to go ahead and push it. Um, so I will. I, I want experience points right now. So that's plus four XP, but also plus one taint. And remember, uh, and I'm going to put this in my um, resolved events here. So plus one taint. So I'm moving that plus four experience points, one, two, three, four. Cool. So I resolve that. And then it says, have all adventures been resolved in the adventure token? Well, not yet, not yet. So we have to keep on going. So we did one event here. And then the next thing we have to do is another event. Okay, so we have to resolve another event. Um, and let's go ahead and draw this. That is a discovery. So we've discovered a ruined tomb. This tomb may still hold relics of the past. To search, make a faith toss. Okay, so this is the first time we're encountering the faith toss. It's essentially like flipping a coin. So you have a, a check mark on one side and you have an X mark on the other side of this faith token, uh, faith toss token. And you have to, if you uh, get a check, you gain four experience. But if you get an X, you remove two experience. Or I could choose to not do any of this and increase my taint by one. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll the dice, or rather toss the coin. I'm going to uh, try to flip it, and we get a check mark. So this uh, worked out well for us. So there's a little bit of chance here. Uh, we get four experience points. So that was cool. That worked out in our favor. One, two, three, four. We are now up to eight experience points. We've still got a couple of um, options to resolve on this guy we have uh we can do a rest all right so we've come across we've resolved the event event and now we have to rest so let's see what uh rest looks like according to our handy dandy turn order schematics uh, a rest means you spend experience points on stat upgrades by choosing an upgrade of higher level and then paying the cost to unlock it uh, use the rest actions pay cost to receive a certain effect 
perform these actions as many times as long as the cost has been paid each time. And then once finished, you can skip or continue or skip continue to step three, right? Step three is over here. Great, so we're resting right now, which means we could potentially, we've got eight experience points in our character board right now, and we could spend those eight uh, to uh, go up in level in one of these things. So um, the only one that we can afford right now are we could up our starting defense to three, or we could up our maximum health to eight um, by spending either six experience points over here or eight experience points over here. Other things that we could spend on, we could do rest actions are heal wounds, increase immunity, buy action cards, and remove cards. Um, so right now, we our health points are down to five. So I'm thinking it's probably a good thing to increase our um, starting defense from one to three. So I'm gonna spend one, two, three, four, five, six experience points to increase my starting defense to three. And I'm gonna up my defense from one to three. Okay, so that's what I've done. Now I've got um, one experience points left and I could spend that to buy an action card, uh, shuffle your removed action cards and draw three, store one and remove the rest. Or I could remove uh, a card, uh, search and remove cards from the stored cards or hand. Uh, if, there's a, if I had blinded cards already, like which are garbage cards, and I could remove them. Um, or I could heal some wounds Cost is minus two draw deck cards. A heal one health point, not above your base max health value. Or I could increase my immunity, decrease melee or spell vulnerability by one. Well, right now I am at one, so um, those are not helpful to me right now. So I think I will do a rest action. I will uh, get rid of two of my uh, action cards. Right, I'll place them here on the uh, store removed action cards area of my character sheet, and I will uh, heal one health point. Great, so I'm back up. I'm full up to six. Cool. So now, uh, now that we've resolved the uh, rest phase on the um, encounter token that we're currently trying to resolve, now we have to do an encounter. All right, so that's the last thing you guys haven't seen. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Um, we are doing an encounter. So. To resolve an encounter, it says right here, draw the number of enemies indicated by your taint track and set your starting defense. So my taint track is currently indicating that I will encounter two enemies in an encounter. So I'm going to draw one enemy, the parasitic muncher, and another enemy, a plague carrier. Cool. And um, so this plague carrier has eight hit points. It is... Uh, has a vulnerability of two to physical attacks and uh, it is immune to uh, magic attacks. So that's kind of a bummer. And this parasitic muncher has four hit points. It is, um, it has a vulnerability of one to physical attacks and two to magical attacks. So it's more um, susceptible to magic attacks. And uh, they also have things that need to be, uh, extra things that need to be resolved. Uh, so I'm fighting these two things right now. Great. So I've set that and my starting, it says set your starting defense. So I start, I set my defense to uh, three, which is my starting defense. So it's a good thing that I buffed up my defense. Then the round begins. Refill your hand to six cards from the draw deck. Okay, so we'll take more cards here from the draw deck. Oh, well, this is a bummer. Uh, my draw deck currently has all magical attacks, which is kind of an annoying thing. Let me go ahead and show you um, what's available in my uh, draw deck here. Because um, <laughs> I've got a uh, plague carrier that is immune to magical attacks. So this is, uh, this is not good for me right now in terms of resolving that, but that's, that's fine. Um, then player will use action cards, skills, and deal damage. So combat page 15. Then um, once there, the opponents will use skills and deal damage and players will receive damage to defense first, then health, and then the round ends. Player decides which use action cards to store and remove other cards. Repeat until either the player or the enemies are defeated. Okay, so we are going to start fighting. We're fighting this parasitic muncher and this plague carrier. 
And uh, as I explained, right now, all I have are spell attacks here, which is bad for uh, fighting this plague carrier because it has uh, complete immunity to, um, to spell attacks. So uh, unless something changes here, I'm not going to be able to uh, do damage to this plague carrier initially. So we'll see how that goes. So we're going to have to concentrate our combat on the Parasitic Muncher. It is more susceptible to uh, damage attacks. It has four hit points. So let us try to uh, see what we can do. Now, remember, uh, on our, our max attacks right now is three. Um, we haven't been able to upgrade our maximum attacks yet. So we have to choose three of these cards. And we have to do uh, four hit points worth of damage. So... Um, here's a magical attack here that's going to do two points of damage at tier one times two equals four points of damage. So with this one card, I kill the Parasitic Muncher. Boom. And then I am use this card and now I have to decide if I'm going to store it or I'm going to, uh, re to remove it. So I'm going to put that down there for now. And let's take a closer look here. Now, there's a thing that we have to resolve. After attacking, the target loses one experience. So we have to lose... Uh, hmm, after the, attacking, the target loses one experience. Um, so I'm, gonna, uh, I'm going to interpret this as after this guy attacks, the target will lose one experience. So I actually don't have to resolve this right now. I killed it before it had a chance to attack. So that guy is dead. I've taken out a Parasitic Muncher. I have two more uh, cards, action cards to play. Um, sadly, these are all uh, magical attacks. So they're going to do exactly zero damage to, uh, to this remaining monster over here, this Plague Carrier. Um, but I have to use up cards from my hand to be able to uh, get some physical attacks into my uh, into my hand here. So um, even though I know it's not going to do any damage, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. So I'm going to uh, play this Whirlwind. Okay, one times zero is zero damage to the Plague Carrier. And I'm going to play this Endure, which is one times zero, zero damage to the Plague Carrier. So now I've used up uh, all of my allowed attacks, and now I have to choose which one I want to keep. I'm going to keep Whirlwind, uh, and I'm going to remove uh, this guy and this guy. So these guys get removed, and I'm keeping Whirlwind in my stored action cards. Now, um, it is now the Plague Carrier's turn to attack me. So it does one magical damage to me. And I have to compare that to my vulnerability to uh, magical attacks, which is one. So it's going to do one point of damage that I'm going to take on my defense right now. So it reduces my defense to two and um, it doesn't affect my health. And uh, that is what the Plague Carrier was able to do. Now, after attacking, the target gains one taint. So it's increasing my corruption level. So it attacked me, so I'm going to now increase my taint. Uh, as per the card. Okay, <clears throat> so um, the player, I use my action cards, the opponent used its uh, skills and dealt damage. I took damage to my defense first and I uh, got rid of my action cards a little bit early here and now I have to repeat. So I'm going to draw back up to my, I'm going to refill my hand to six cards from my draw deck. So one, ah, oh, there I got a physical attack. Yay! Two and Three. I have two physical attacks to be able to use here. Obviously, I'm going to use them because they're the only things that are going to do damage to the play carrier. So let's go ahead and see what is going to what's going to happen here. Um, this guy is will do one damage physical at this tier. This guy will do one damage. And what are the special things here? This one is draw weapon. After using this card, immediately draw a card from the draw deck into hand. I like that. And this one says combo. In one round, play cards in this particular order. Three successive uh, physical attacks. And then to play this card out of max attacks cap. Ah, so, the, so if I want to be able to play this card beyond my maximum attacks, then I don't play it now. I play it in one round. If I play three physical attacks, I'll be able to add this guy on. Um, 
that doesn't really help me right now. I could hold it off, but um, you know, we'll see. So I definitely need to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and play these two cards right now. And I have one more to do, uh, which is a spell that's not going to do any damage. So I'm going to play this magical attack right here. So this guy will do one damage. This guy will do one damage. And I will be able to immediately draw a card from my draw deck into my hand. Well, okay, let's let's you know let, let's 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 resolve this in order. So I'll do this one first. One damage to the play carrier. He takes one damage. So he goes down to oh no, nope. he goes down to seven hit points. Place the damage token on him. Right, and then um, I will be able to draw a card from the draw deck into my hand immediately. And it's a physical attack. Yay! Cool. So, uh, let's see what we got here. Um, finishing move. When this card defeats the enemy, gain health and experience not above the max. Okay, well, that's not. I'm not going to defeat this enemy right now. Um, but I will play this um, to do another point of damage to the play carrier. And then, um, do I play this now or do I hold off on it? Um, he's only going to do one damage. He's going to be a little bit more useful later on. Mm, you know what? I'm just going to play this now. So another point of damage to the Plague Carrier. Three. So he's down to five. Um, so now he gets to do damage to me. Once again, one magical damage times one. He does one point of damage, which I take on my armor. I take on my defense. So I'm down to one over there. I'm not losing any health yet. Cool. Um, and then I get to pick one of these cards to store. I think, I think I'm going to store this draw weapon card. I found that kind of useful this time around. So I'm putting that in my stored action cards. Therefore, I am uh, removing these two other cards. They're going into my removed action cards. And then I'll draw back up. I get a physical attack with a two. That's nice. And another physical attack. Great. Um, so now... Uh, we are going to go again. We're still locked in combat with that play carrier. So, obviously, we're playing these two physical attacks here. Uh, I'm going to do two damage to it from this card over here. So that's uh, another two damage. So he's got a, a total of five damage now, like so. He's got three points of damage left, uh, three, three health points left. And I'm going to do this guy, which is one point of damage and then melee weakness. Increase the target's melee vulnerability be a one if undefended. Doesn't affect this card's damage. Uh, increase the target's melee vulnerability by one if undefended. Undefended. I would have to, uh, I would have to see what uh, undefended uh, means um, from, a, uh, from a rule standpoint. But hold on. Right now we're doing one point of damage to this play carrier. So that's six points. Um, and we have one more uh, card to do. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and play this card, Increase Focus. And so now I get to choose which of these cards to keep. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this Increase Focus card. I'll circle back around to, to, to kind of find out what that undefended means. All right, so and did he do damage to me? I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. I'm going to assume that you haven't done damage to me yet this turn, so I take one more damage. So my defense is down to zero, and so the next any any future damage the play carrier does to me is going to start hitting my health. Cool, I'm going to draw back up to three cards. Great, they're all spells, so I'm not going to be able to do anything useful here. He's going to do me one more damage. I'm going to choose uh, three spell cards to get rid of, uh, or rather two to get rid of and one to keep. I'm going to keep this gain defense uh, effect here. And let's see if I get some physical attacks, please. Physical attacks, I got one, I got two. Great. So we are going to play this guy, which does one times two, two points of damage. And that's enough, and I'm going to uh, play these two magical attacks that have no special ability here. So at the end of this round, I'm keeping this physical attack here, and I'm discarding these two magical attacks that have no ability here. And so finally, finally, oh boy, 
I have slain the Plague Carrier. After a pitched battle, I did eight points of damage to it. So what do I get? I get uh, two experience points for defeating the Plague Carrier. Um, oh, I haven't been increasing my taint. So it did like three attacks to me. And so every time it attacked, one, two, three, I should have been increasing my taint. So I retroactively increased my taint by three based on the number of attacks the Plague Carrier did to me. And um, I have to gain two experience points, one, two. And guess what? Um, my side quest says gain two experience points in an encounter, which I did, and the reward is to heal one. So I've just completed this side quest, and I gain one experience, one health, so I'm back up to six. Uh, this plague carrier is dead. And uh, have I now resolved everything on this token? I resolved event, event, rest, and encounter. I did. So I've, I've finally completed everything on this token. And so let's see. That means that we have resolved that particular adventure. Put event card into the resolved events pile. Uh, have all adventures been resolved in the adventure token? The answer is yes. So therefore, add one taint for each event, encounter, and rest resolved. Oh boy. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. I resolved all of those things, so I'm going to increase my taint. One, two, three, four. I'm right at the edge of encountering two enemies or three enemies um, every time. Uh, if my taint goes up by one more every encounter, I'm going to do three enemies now. And then I potentially can take a look at this side quest. Side quest is defeat two foes in first turn. If I'm able to do that, I get a four experience reward. So I think that I will actually take on this side quest. And then now that we've got that, we essentially will move on. Uh, if I can bring the map down in here. So now we choose if we want to go uh, further, delve further into the dungeon or go sideways. Um, there's, like I said, no going back up. All right. So I'm going to pause right there. Uh, I've shown you a couple of uh, turns, and I've shown you every kind of event that you can have. Uh, I've shown you what combat looks like. So I'm going to pause right there, and then I will uh, give you my uh, impressions of the game. <clears throat>